we are joined by a very, very special guest this afternoon, um, Matt O'Reilly, who was on the original 2014-2015 Prolific Prep team. And Matt O'Reilly actually hails from the East Bay and graduated from Bucknell University last year after uh, playing four years at Bucknell. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Coach. Thank you for having me. You just graduated from Bucknell last year. I see a gym in the background there, and then I see that you're a potential commercial real estate. What are you doing nowadays? Yeah, so I'm, I'm working in, in commercial real estate. I'm in the, the big boy non-basketball world in a different, a different phase of life now, you know, working, working from 6 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. In a, you know, in a cubicle, and it's a little bit different, but it's a, it's a competitive grind, so I, I, I respect that about it like that about it. Sure. Take me back, you going into your senior year, some of the things that you were prior to even deciding to potentially play your last year with us, which was unique and hard and, and, and just powerful. Yeah, no, I mean, for, for me, I was, you know, a local guy. I didn't tra to, like, travel extremely far, you know, in order to join prolific prep. Yeah, I traveled the most at everybody to get to practice on time, but I didn't have to give up as much as everyone else did. And, and I can admit that for me because I got to stay in my high school for that year and graduate with my friends and all of that. But I, I was coming off a lot of injuries. I had, you know, everything, I was on a high, high. And then I came off a lot of injuries and I, I wasn't getting the exposure I needed. I wasn't getting anything, you know, the, the, the attention and the, the right, you know, advice that I needed as well. And in the end, for me, I had to do something that was going to help me get to the Division One level because I knew I was there. I had scholarship offers initially and had lost them from injury and things like that. So I wanted to get back to it. And, and Kutzville, you were I was training with you and you and Jeremy all summer long, and I, I figured, you know, if we were training with the best of the best. I was getting in, I was getting in high level workouts every single day for the, over the course of two years with the Wildcats guys, with the prolific prep guys and, and all these different, all these different players, you know, and that, that was something for me that I was really attracted to. I liked the training that we were doing. I was really attracted to the idea of, of, you know, really having basketball specific skill specific people in front of you all the time. The coaches are so passionate about the game and they're so passionate about getting us better that it's been really like the, the training is hardcore. In the end, you know, it, it really worked out for me. I, I ended up getting, you know, despite the injuries, I got through to, to a four-year school. I got four years of Division One basketball paid for on scholarship. I got to go to the NCAA tournament twice. And when, when going twice instead of four times is, is disappointing, then you can definitely say you're spoiled in, 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 many, in many ways. So I'm, the whole process was interesting for me. and, and as it was for everyone, but you can see how it kind of worked out and, and played out for everyone else. There's definitely a lot, of, a lot of positives that I, you know, will always attribute back to, to that year. So walking in the gym the first couple of days, you look to your left, you look to your right, you're like, I mean, different countries, different size, different talent. Initial reactions uh, after, after, I mean, icebreakers, what, what, what were your thoughts? I mean, it, it was characters. It was me. It was characters. And I'm a character myself. I mean, anyone who knows me knows I'm a little bit of a goofball. Um, but it was characters. I walked inside and, like, seen 14 different extremely interesting characters, all of them unique in, in their own way, whether that be, whether it be, like, linguistically. C'est pas bon. Il faut la balle doit aller en l'air. It was high-level basketball, but full of just interesting young kids that I really, really liked, and it was it kept us alive. I mean, the amount of funny stories we had when you when you mix that many cultures and that many just weird and cool dudes at the same time and put them in a hotel room and in you know West Virginia for for God's sake, you know, where you're out here like you, you can't not have really funny, lasting memories. You know, we have videos that I'll that I'll never stop laughing at for the rest of my life every time I see them. Imagine if we had the, if Overtime, like, which a company out of New York was alive then, and they actually filmed our first year, right? Oh my gosh, that one would have been a movie of all movies. I get that you guys are doing the one right now, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's excellent. The skill level may be a little bit higher. I don't jump like Jalen Green, and neither does, neither does Vitey and, and Amadou and Marco and Kyle and Aljavon Josta. Just does, but 
we all were different than you know than some of those guys but i'll tell you what man that team was interesting man to entertainment alone that's right it was there it was i was going to say the entertainment value yeah. of marco filipovich ryan stewart kyle lafroy body kamagate matt o'reilly uh, Mickey Law and Ryan Stewart. I mean, the the, the different eclectic. Just... It was, oh my god! And it, across the board, like it was, it was too much to handle at times. I mean, we would sit and and don't get me wrong, Coach Phil, you're involved in that. You're involved in that too. You have a personality that that fits right in with that. If you can't shoot, it's a hard sport to play. You got ping pong and checkers and other stuff you can do. Let's go. So some of the things. Um, that you remember, was it the competitive practices? Was it the actual trips? Was it the games? Was it all three? What were some of the things that you, when you remember back, like, you know, some of the things that stick out to you in terms of your experience and how it, you know, what you enjoy? Uh, I think for me, I think for me, the things I remember probably the most, the most, the, there are two things. It's, I, I'll give it three, I'll give it three. I. I don't want to undermine the fact that playing against high level talent every single day, competing against guys that were just, you know, NBA level talent already, you know, was eye opening for me. I had done it my entire life, but being on a stage there and knowing like, you gotta hold your own, right? Like you can't just leave guys like Josh and Kyle and Aljavon and just leave them alone and let, and, you know, have them be out there. Like if you're a division one basketball player, if you're a division one shooter, you better step up onto that court and realize you're supposed to be on. You're supposed to be across from Miles Bridges. You're supposed to be across from these guys. And if you can't get over that, then get off the freaking court. You know, and that that was something that was good for me because coming off my injuries, I had lost a lot of the confidence that I had before, yeah. and I had to grow it back. And so I think from being in those situations where you're trying to earn the fans, the earn the fans' respect, earn the person across from you's respect, and earn your teammates' respect because. Guys like Josh, Kyle, Aljavon, all the everyone on our team was specifically those like those two, those three were putting in a lot, you know, and I was too. So for me, I wanted to to make sure that I met up met up to their expectations because I had expectations for them that I wanted them to meet, and that's that's and they did, you know, and 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 not always perfectly because no team is that way. I say the second one for me is the trips the trips like the hotel was is the is the real this is really the main one it's like the hotel trips the plane flights the, like we would just just messing around across cultures pushing boundaries not pushing boundaries laughing all these different things by the end of it it was it was just the amount of stories we have whether it's that's the you know me you and and mika and kyle in the hotel room talking or or bitey rapping or you know, we, you can go back to so many different things, snowballs to the face. Like we were doing, we were having so much fun on some of these trips that I, I could definitely never forget that. And the last one I think would be just the comedy of practice, not even anything else other than the comedy. Amaru, what is it? So what, you're cool, cool. Like just the, the, the cool. The language discrepancies, the way you guys are like, guys said, no, all my dude was trying to catch the ball like this at the time, and now he's the biggest beast of all time. I still remember in practice that one day, I look at you, I was like, hey, Coach Phil, like, I think I know why he's not, why he wasn't catching it. And you're like, what is it? I was like, and it's also why he's jamming his finger all the time. And it's like, he's catching the ball like this. The second he opened it up, he's like, catching it dunking on everybody and that that i have nothing to do with this at all but you can see how much of a beast that guy is now you know he's a stud i'm super proud of of seeing him but those moments the funny moments of, of in practice uh mixed with the heated moments you know when you're matching up like naturally on that team i was one of the guys who who played big minutes and i was a two yeah. three so i matched up with josh in practice and you have to match up with josh in practice you have to was not a, the best defender, I'd say that straight up, but you have to you have to ball and get your balls together and you know and play somebody, you know? And and that was something that the comedy mix with the intensity was it just made for funny, long lasting memories to say the very least. Yeah. I enjoyed the practice a lot because it was the two hours that I can just for that time period just kind of focus on basketball while right. I'm worrying about you know, like scheduling and making sure that, you know, 
that were going to get on the flights or, or vans or, or deal with academics. So the, the practices were actually my, my safe haven. And they were so competitive because everyone was competitive in their own, their own kind of, their own kind of way. But the, yeah. way Jeremy, the way Jeremy and I kind of were, were wired was skill development. I just loved, I mean, I wanted you to even shoot more threes. I want Ryan Stewart yeah. and I wanted, I wanted yeah. us to be offensive driven and skill. And I'm not even, not even worried, worrying about missed shots. I'm competitive drills shooting. That's how I envisioned that I wanted to do it. And I, I tried to do that to the best of my ability. No, I think you guys did a great job with that. I think one thing I can always say is there was no lack of, of skill development while we were there. That's something that I, that I was thankful for. I mean, the amount of, the amount of shooting we did, you know, that was for me as a, as a shooter, it was really good for me to see just how, look, I look at myself and I always will. I'm the best shooter in the world. Like I just say, I, I have to. And if anyone tries to argue with me, I'll tell them to come on the court and we'll do a shooting competition. I'm not going to say, I hit, so I don't have the record, right? But if you want to get in the gym, I'll shoot to the death on all, and I will win. When it came to those practices, you were competing. It's like we were doing, getting shots after shot after shot after shot, and you're competing. It's like every single day it was me and Josh oh. are on, like, right next to each other. And Kyle's rebounding from me, like, come on, let's go, Maddie. And I'm over here, like, trying to beat this guy in shooting cup distance. It's like, how do you, I'm the shooter. You're the white shooter. You got to make it. And, but from that, you learned reps and competitive drive and what it can do to your game and how much it can harden your game and your shot and your mental ability and that, that was something that I needed a lot of kids need and and if you accept the challenge it can do a lot for you going forward you know and, and I think for me personally my shot who I was as, as a basketball player and a role player and understanding my role but also being competitive in that role um, was something I, I got largely from those skill development heavy, but also com competition heavy practices for sure. So any advice, and, and we could have our own podcast on this because, um, you know, we're both probably clearly thinking type people, but mm -hmm. advice for high school kids that, you know, that basketball right now is potentially their avenue for um, opportunity to go to college. Right. Some Absolutely. of them view it as their competitive fueling fire because they're so competitive, but they're really good at it. Others may think that I could potentially earn a living at it. And there's all these different dynamics. Advice for the younger guys trying to figure it out because you're dealing with a lot of stuff. You're dealing with confidence and pressures and injuries and levels of basketball. It's the basketball world's complex. Right. Now, I think the fir first and foremost, the thing that anybody should do is – identify what it is that motivates you specifically identify what it is that motivates you identify what it is that you want to achieve yeah. and then from there you really don't have any excuses i think the other thing that's really important is just fit and understanding your role having enough maturity to not diminish yourself in a sense you're not saying i can't be more than this but this is where i am this is where i can make the most impact and make myself look the best. Because sometimes you just need to open the door. And if you're continuing to develop, the opportunity that you're really looking for will come through an avenue you didn't really recognize it or foresee it coming in. And, and if guys have a little bit of maturity, um, which is tough to do at a young age, but to understand, hey, look, I do this really, really, really well. I need to work on these aspects of my game and I will but I'm going to show my strengths. I'm going to find a situation that allows me to show my strengths. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, it's just a function of having the mental toughness and capacity to say, I want this thing, you know, and you have to love it. You have to love it and want it. And there's a mix you can't really, you can't really describe. Everyone says they love the game, right? But I mean, it's, I mean, like I, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna even lie and, pretend like I'm the most competitive person to ever walk the face of the planet. But I, after Bucknell games, if we had a bad game, I was shooting. If I didn't shoot the ball well, I was on the gun until two in the morning. because so it was just like, I couldn't sleep otherwise. And you have to have a little bit of that. You can see the Jordan documentary. If you have a lot of that, you might be hated a lot, but you'll be the most successful basketball player of all time. But you, you need that. And you need, you need the love, you need the drive, the, the competitive level, but also the maturity because not everyone's Jordan. Some people are Scottie Pippen. Some people are Steve Kerr. You know, 
like when you're relating it back to there, you know, and, and that's kind of the, that's the way I look at it. It doesn't mean that Steve Kerr isn't one of the best at what he does. I mean, you can be in the top percent, the top one percentile of what you do and still tell everyone I'm the best in the world at what I do and have pride in that. And you had great parents too, which sometimes is either luck of the draw, but your parents were to me from the outside looking in your parents were intelligent, uh, mature, Mm -hmm. um and mature is really important in the sense where they 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 kind of had a realistic view of a lot of things and it just it just had good calm stability and then they really supported you in whatever endeavors like you you just reminded me a couple of things i didn't realize how many injuries you had battled like 18 months prior i you know it's just i didn't realize that you had those injuries and i, I was like oh man that's right you're coming off injuries. two broken wrists two knee procedures two two broken feet a broken back right now I'm, I'm getting surgery next month on my back so i'm my body's taking a beating but my parents have what you're getting at is the most important thing other than faith like i mentioned before but it, my parents were everything right and i, I don't try to preach on that too much because not everybody has the same situation. I was blessed with an amazing situation um, with my parents. I have two parents that are incredibly loyal, supportive. loyal, incredibly loyal, mm -hmm. incredibly understanding. They're, they are, they are, don't like to meddle. They don't like to get in the middle of things. There are times we laugh all the time, like an AAU man, it would have been nice sometimes if my parents were just like, it's a little bit like, Oh, you know what I mean? But in high school, we, we were never the teen mom. We were never, it was just like, look, I'm here to support my son. I love him. I, I know how badly he wants that. I'm going to help him get it um, to the best of my ability, but I'm not meddling. I'm not getting involved and I'm not making it anything more than what it is, right? It's, it's a ticket. It's a golden ticket to get a great education. Fast forward six years later. I mean, I saw you and Ryan Stewart in January at the Crush in the Valley at a, a little tournament I started six years ago that's grown to whatever, because, you know, I just, the high school teams in the area are great. And in our program, it's just kind of an organic thing. And then we have a, you know, prolific now had a little overtime show, you know, and, and yeah. thoughts on, um, you know, thoughts on uh, this past year's team or the overtime show, if you've seen a little bit reflecting back to your team, you, you, some, you probably have similarities or remember certain things, but what are some of the things that, uh, that stick, stick out to you? It's really ridiculous to see the entire thing, right? Because there are a lot of similarities, but there are an incredible amount of differences. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, all my shirts are still double X, you know, like I still, <laughs> I was telling Joey, Joey, I was like, dude, I still got double X shirts. Like it was different back then. We were wearing practice jerseys in certain games. We were trying to figure stuff out. Like we were, we were taking buses and vans and, and Bitey has no clue who's picking them up from the airport. And I have no clue who's picking me up from it. It's like, we are all sitting here doing the craziest of things, and, and it's definitely far more organized now, I'm sure, because now you have the stress off your back of having to be the coach, and you guys all can at least, I'm sure it's immensely stressful in different ways because it's grown so much, but at the very least for the players, I can say it definitely seems to be something that is set up for them to be, we were kind of in it. We knew what was kind of going on a little bit on the outside, and I'm sure they do too, but... Mm -hmm. But with, with ours, because it was so new, because it, there was definitely guys like me who were older and kind of matured to some of these things saw it for what it was. Like, okay, here we are. You know, I mean, you used to laugh about it um, because that was the case. But I, I think that, gosh, the team now, it's, it's incredible to see, you know, how, what kind of talent you can put on a court in, in a, with the PP right there, you know, the crew. It's, you laugh because it's like I still remember when it was just like, little vlog episodes and like and like a nice little t-shirt and some adidas shoes right and we're all sitting here like man we're here right and then grace church but it's it's grown it's grown immensely and and it's fun to watch i was there just watching so yeah i don't know any of the guys i didn't meet any of the guys right and it wouldn't matter i was there for a year they wouldn't know who i am but it's cool to see these guys put on the same jersey that i did mm -hmm. um know that i was a part of this you know at, at, at the at the core of it i was i was in the in it to some extent you know it's not i'm not i would never claim any any part in in how successful those players are but i i was a part of the group uh, aspect of it and, and that's pretty cool to be a part of as you see you see crush in the valley get sold out man i got there an hour early because you told me to and it was sold out 
and I couldn't even see the whole court. And it was we watched the whole game before that one just to make sure we could see you guys play. You know, and, and it's, it's pretty crazy to see that because don't get me wrong, we had a lot of fans in Napa Valley College, but not – sometimes we just had one of the bleachers up, you know, like – and that's fair. I understood it. They probably didn't even know Josh Jackson was in town. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They didn't know. They like, couldn't see through the vines. It was like, you know, and it was just different. We've had five McDonald's All-Americans, right? We've had two guys drafted in the NBA. We have guys playing professionally. We've had 37 guys playing college. I, th I think uh, like 21 of the 37 or something are their first time in their families to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, so literally your team year one, did so much for others, for people that you don't even know, from countries that you, I mean, we had a kid from Republic of Georgia this year. We had a kid from, you know, we had Nigeria and Guinea and all these schools. Without year one and you guys, there's no year four, five, six. Right, right. I, I, I definitely recognize that, but I also, you guys know, you guys have put a lot of work in that year, this year, the year before, to, to take full credit if you guys wanted to, but I appreciate you recognizing us in the, you know, in that same sense as it was. We had some really, really cool guys that I definitely would say for myself is what it is. We had some guys in that team that, that did a lot, were really great guys that deserve a ton of respect and deserve a ton of, you know, credit for, for things that they contributed hmm. to the program, to my life, to my teammates' lives, and obviously to, to people who we haven't met as well, you know. But I, I have some of the best friends of my life, you know, on that team. And meeting up with some of these guys this year and, and spending time with them is like, like I told you, it's, it's the best thing you could ever ask for. I'm thankful that, that I had that year. I'm, I'm as thankful for all those kinds of things as anyone else. Uh, way more, I'm way more thankful, sorry, than, uh, for those things than anyone else should ever be to us for taking a leap of faith. It was, it was fun. We enjoyed it. Say hi to your parents. Um, we'll probably see you shortly, hopefully. Definitely see we'll see you in the valley. I'll see you at the crush in the valley. My little brother's going to be there. Go Campo, go Prolific Prep. I'll be rooting for both of you guys. Saturday, yeah, Saturday. Or foremost, go my little brother, wherever he is. I'm, I'm rooting for yeah, that. Yeah, no. That's my, my little homie right there. Well, we appreciate it, Matt. Thanks. Um, have a good rest of uh, Corona life. You know, Corona, you know, this 19, whatever. It's just uh, it's surreal. But we'll see yeah. you shortly. Thanks for taking the time. Of course. Hope everyone is safe and healthy and, and happy, obviously, in the, in the time as well, Coach Phil, for you and your family and, and your loved ones as well. Thank you, Matt. Okay. All right, Coach. Talk to you bye soon. Bye.